we really must insist that the audience be quiet. We gave so you can attack our community? Up. So you really can kill our program? Again. We don't want to ask for another recess, so please we'll get out of here soon. What, so you can hurry up and kill the program without haste? All right, so Mr. Kramers, do you have three more? Okay, other board members, I, I, if, we, if the audience will not, if a few members of the audience will not show respect to whoever's speaking, then we, we will have Respect to us! Please. Other comments from the board? Other board members? All right, please, please, we, we really... You need to hurt us? You need to attack us? I would like to... And by the way, it's really sad that we have these issues that are of monumental importance to our community and you continue to have them in this teeny tiny room with almost half of it being filled by staff. Not just, I'm not a victim of the staff, but how dare you continue to treat our community this way. It's absolutely appalling that you cannot have a school open for a meeting of this importance. We are engaged people, we are interested in the education of our community, and you treat us again like enemies. We're all wanted, our water's taken away. We can't have water, for God's sake. In a meeting where we love education, where the students want to show their love for education. And so what have you done, TUSD? Everybody says appeal, and yeah, that's all well and good, let's appeal. But did you tell the public what kind of record you set? Did you establish a sufficient factual record at the administrative hearing in order for us to have a good appeal? Absolutely not. And any lawyer will tell you, oh, yeah, with a bad factual record, you can't win. So whose decision was that? Was that you two who testified as hostile witnesses, Mr. Stegeman and Mr. Hicks? Was that at your direction, or was that the DeConcini law firm? I want to know who DeConcini represented here. Did they represent your interest? Did they represent the other board members? Adelita Guijalva was not called. Judy Burns was not called. And it's really sad that Judy Burns had a fervor for this program, and yet you are undoing everything that she, she stood for. And so we're here to say we're not going away. We really are not going away. And we are going to get to the bottom of who is responsible for setting this atrocious factual record. That you didn't call the proper uh, experts. That you didn't call Adelita and Judy. That you allowed, the lawyers allowed uh, Mr. Stegham and Mr. Hicks to go on and on and call us a cult with no effective cross-examination. You think a lawyer is going to cross-examine Pull it back. Uh, Pull it, Stegman. Stegman. Pull it. Yeah. Pull it, Stegman. There I, is no motion on the floor. I believe that I have approximately 25 questions and. Uh, <laughs> Five percent of the high school students take these classes. Did you actually look at how many classes were offered? Um, there's nothing to tell us that if we could offer these at every school and we could afford to provide more classes, that we wouldn't have a tremendous amount of students requesting them. Is Dr. Stegeman has not fulfilled his presidential responsibility to this board by espousing his dissenting opinion through the media and then this resolution. Yeah. Yeah. This resolution stems from reactionary political statements made by Arizona elected officials during their campaigns for office and that were based on prejudice and hearsay, not fact. Yep. Yep. This resolution starts a dangerous precedent of dictating curriculum to the superintendent and his staff based on political pressure and not much else. And lastly, I oppose this resolution and urge my fellow board members to soundly reject it.
today, and in the future. This is the beginning. That's right. You have, you have woken some people who didn't know where this street was at. <laughs> you, you have gotten the attention of people who didn't know who you were. They know now. Good morning. So you need to be very, very careful about the next steps that you make because this is just the beginning of a long process. We're not going anywhere. We're not going to allow our kids to be denied anything. I don't care what they look like. If this is going to be a place where education is happening, then you're going to spend the money on the kids and give them what they need. Well, guess what? We can and will replace you. exactly what dismantling the Mexican-American studies classes will do. It will decrease the graduation rates, it will increase incarceration rates, and um, they clearly know that these classes have helped us find our identity and have helped us feel more comfortable of who we are and, um, you know, in the community that we live in and like, the culture that, you know, we belong to or the things that make us feel that we actually belong in a community especially in Arizona where, you know, so many things are going down, like um, attack on, you know, your brown people, Latinos, um, you know, Mexicanos. The ethnic studies program that is here, you've heard over and over again. I don't know how many people have come to speak to you. Mr. Cabrera gave you statistics that shows that these young people, and look behind you because they're right behind you. You show them in, in pictures as to these children. These are the children with Washington University, ASU, uh, Stanford. Those are the same children that benefit that we want for our children to be able to go to those universities, to be able to succeed. You've known by the statistics that if they participate in ethnic studies, they've been more successful. They've attended universities at a greater rate. We would want that for all those <coughs> students at Tucson Unified District, for the 100%. But if we can only get it for the, the 65 or more that make up that Latino population, that's great. But instead of having you dismiss a program that's been successful, show your autonomy, you're an autonomous board, you can appeal this decision, this racist decision, this ignorant decision that was made by the state. Do the right thing. Stand up for something the way I was taught. That if I don't stand for something, I'm going to fall for anything.
come here and I'm very passionate about it and I implore you to do the right thing. Thank you. Um, okay, so actually it's called to the audience. I do not wish to speak to the governing board, but to the community. Therefore, I will be facing the community that now. Good. Yeah. Is, you know, you can sit there and listen or ignore what I'm about to say since either way they don't seem to pay attention to what we want. It's come to the point where we feel our own governing board has turned their backs on us. They sit there because they are forced to listen, forced to pretend they care. We're tired of asking them to help their community. They already know that dismantling the mass program will decrease the graduation rate and increase the incarceration rate. They know very well that these classes have helped us find our identity. But here's a message I want you, the community, to hear. It may be up to the governing board, the future of our classes in TUSD, but it is up to us to keep them alive, regardless of what their decision may be. We will fight and we will keep our culture, uh, culture his, history, identity, language, and education alive. Tonight, Adelita Grijalva is outnumbered by privileged men that are not interested in what students want and need. Mark Spiderman has missed by the and most likely will to stand up against bigotry and injustices and will vote to not appeal the state's ban on ethnic studies. A majority of TSC board members have demonstrated their willingness to surrender to the racism of Phoenix politicians like Superintendent John Hoopenthal. TUSD is proving to, ta uh, to care to take a stand only if money is an issue. The TUSD governing board as a whole essentially is on a collision course, voting time and time again against their own students, communities, and histories. They may think they're getting rid of their biggest problem, but the, end the ending of the classes won't stop the problems that they're about to face. The TUSD governing board district, state, and world will soon feel the continued commitment students have to, per, uh, to preserve our classes. We demand TUSD to appeal Hoopenthal's decision. We demand the state immediately withdraw the ban on ethnic studies. We have the right to culture, culture, history, identity, language, and education. We want an educational system where all cultures fit. Unidos we stand or divided we fall. So it is a program that is actually um, benefiting our program, uh, uh, benefiting our community. Graduation rates are going up. Um, more students are going to college, but uh, but that's also something that should be considered as well. Not just um, not just the number of students and the uh, the money. Money seems to be um, uh, more important than students, more important than human lives nowadays. So maybe we should look past the money and look uh, towards what's really helping our community. Subsequently, testify that the examples of curriculum based on critical pedagogy and critical race theory did not develop critical thinking. Dr. Stasi made this statement having never witnessed an MAS course and she lacks any understanding by her own admissions regarding the theoretical or philosophical foundation of the curriculum she is critiquing. Dr. Stasi continued by stating that to her knowledge critical race theory and critical pedagogy are not used in K-12 education. A simple Google search demonstrates that the statement is patently false. The approach to K-12 education exists and her testimony primarily highlights her general ignorance on the subject as opposed to her expertise. One of the most troubling statements that Dr. Stotsky made was that MAS courses are, quote, of no benefit to non-Mexican American students. Again, on what basis can she make this claim? What expertise does she possess to make this credible statement? The short answer is none. She grossly overstepped the limits of her expertise to make a statement which, again, is patently false. In 2010, approximately 20% of the Mexican American Studies students were non-Latino, and many made compelling statements regarding the benefits of MAS to their academic development. Students are so passionate you know, about this knowledge and it's changed their life so much that, um, you know, Unidos held a summer institute uh, last summer and we were, you know, learning, um, you know, even more of what was taught in the classes. We, like, dedicated our, our summer to, to knowledge and, like, how many students willingly go to a summer school, you know, because that's what it was. So I think that no matter what, you know, the students' passion for learning will overcome all obstacles learning outside of our schools. It should be kept in our schools. It's not, it's not, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't even be a question whether we learn this at home or at school. It should be in our schools, especially being from Tucson and like, you know, seeing our history and stuff because Arizona is made up of the Mexican-American history. So. We're all still here. We're all, yeah, we're all still here. And I believe that if we cannot learn to learn with each other, then we won't be able to learn to love each other, so. In joint session. In medicine, ignoring empirical data can be malpractice. 
if this decision stands, it would be educational malpractice. Mm -hmm. okay. The, uh, the millions of dollars in the, the represented by this cut potentially uh, won't affect just the Mexican American Studies programs. Uh, this cut, this fine, uh, will have disastrous and a disastrous impact on science, math, reading classes that are absolutely essential to the success of our students. If Tucson students aren't properly prepared uh, in our public schools, they're not going to be prepared for jobs in growing in the growing industries of engineering, in medicine in biosciences, and in many other fields. Uh, so this will take life choices away uh, from the very young people who need them the most. And again, I respectfully, thank you. Uh, I would respectfully urge you to submit an appeal and also. Um, last week, uh, Dr. Sue Yemon uh, took uh, his position and within an hour uh, voted to uh, make you president once again. Uh, some people would find that shocking because your colleagues same department. But to me, that wasn't the most shocking part of last week. What I found shocking was that, uh, and not in a negative way, but I think Dr. Sobiyama mentioned that he knows very little about MAS. And so based on that, I thought like, well, uh, a number of uh, scholars met this weekend in Phoenix from throughout the entire state, NAU press, is that it's very embarrassing for myself as a scholar, you know, to come here to plead, you know, week after week, month after month, about what is naturally ours, you know. Uh, the idea of, or this idea of having to plead. See, the thing is, we have rights that we're born with. We have the right to culture, history, identity, language, and education. Those rights are protected by every single human rights treaty in the world. And we are signatures to most of them, if not all of them. So again, we're not here to plead. Just want you to know that. You know, there are, we're not asking. Thanks very much. Yeah, Dr. Sugiano. Unelected. Uninformed. Please, allow him to speak. He hasn't spoken yet on this issue. I appreciate all the comments here tonight. I appreciate all the emails that I have gotten. I realize that this is an issue that people need to be quiet. On both sides. I am concerned. That in the long term ish interests for our students, that we need to have a curriculum that everyone feels confident about. Yeah. And right now, while we have public support for the curriculum, we also have a lot of the public that is questions the curriculum <coughs> at the state level. Oh, okay. All right, this is not, we really can't continue in this way. Please remain silent and allow Dr. Sugiyama and every other member of the staff who wants to speak to speak. Right. If, if we can't do that, then we'll have to call them a recess. I am very sorry and very angry personally that this issue has come to the board, and the board finds itself in this position. I don't like having the state of Arizona find us in violation of state law. Um, ultimately, even if it is a bad law, it's still the state law, and we can't appeal it. If this happens again, then I will call recess. I, I do it. Uh, to represent, do, give more of a personal story. I'd like to echo also the all this, the the words that my colleague uh, Matt Hines said. I am, I am, I represent District 27 on the west side, um, and a, and majority of the my constituents are also Latino and Native American children. That is the Yaki community. I, I am a grandmother of 21, and currently six of my grandchildren are in TUSD schools. And uh, that's why I'm here. I, I want to, to tell you and to implore upon you to um, appeal this, um, this 
bill and, and this everything that's been happening in the last year. This is one of the reasons I ran because of what was happening. 1070 and 2281 are the two top reasons, uh, and, and health, <laughs> health are the three reasons I ran again after leaving the legislature 10 years ago. It is very important for me to be up here and up at the legislature defending education for all of, not only for all of my grandchildren, but for all of my constituents and all of the children of the state of Arizona. As an educator, um, I taught at QSD. I taught at, uh, my last school was at Lawrence Elementary, and it was the, the education, or the lack of education, and all of the discrimination that was happening um, to, to my children that were attending there at that time, and, and it, 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 at that time it was 75% Yaki children at Lawrence School. And it was the discrimination that led me into politics, first into the Pascua Yaki tribe and then into the legislature in 96. So I, I'm, I'm here to implore upon you to uh, appeal this. Um, I also want to inform you, if you don't already know, um, and also the public, that it only takes 31 votes in the House and 16 votes in the Senate to pass a law. It doesn't necessarily mean that the laws that are passed up there in Phoenix are good laws, the right things to do, or even constitutional. The uh, process to appeal these rulings would be quite costly and there's a strong likelihood that the result will be the same. Based upon the finding of facts, the MAS program is in violation of the law as it is written. Additionally, the, re the risk that the state will withhold 10% of TSD's budget during the appeal process is very real. While I may not agree with the law or the rulings, I have sworn to abide by them. My first responsibility as a governing board member is to provide a quality education for all of the students in this district. It is clear that the Tucson Unified Governing Board needs to act quickly to avoid the loss of any state funding that will certainly adversely affect the education of our students. Go part of it. Since in the short term and long term, the district cannot weather a 10% reduction. With this in mind, I believe that the prudent and responsible course of action is to suspend the Mexican-American Studies classes. This does not mean the Mexican-American Studies program will be suspended. I believe it is in the best interest of the district to mend and not end the advocacy of our students. All necessary Mexican-American Studies support services will be provided to our students. As a member of the Latino community and as an individual to sign I have to ask I know that there are persons on both sides of the issue in this room, and up to this point, everyone's been generally respectful of the on the board and from the lectern. And please, let's continue that and allow Mr. Fair. Continue the attack on us. As a member of the Latino community and as an individual Tucson Unified School District Governing Board, reading from a paper. I am committed to please. providing a Mexican-American Studies program for our students. It is in the district's responsibility to revamp the Mexican American Studies program to reach a much broader segment of our student population. To reach out to students of all ethnicities and I'm going to, I'm sorry, to interrupt here. I really have to ask that the audience be quiet. We had an audience, sufficient audience call for every speaker who signed up to speak and a chance to speak. This is Mr. Famous's chance to speak. Ms. Rahala had her chance to speak. I think all the speakers should be respected. So please respect us. Do you guys hear that? Do you guys hear that? You're not Tell me that you hear that. Bullshit. Bullshit. Tell me that you guys hear that. You were voted by your constituency to represent your constituency. If you can't do that, you don't belong on the board. You're an apartheid board. Listen to the community outside. You cowards. You cowards! The people you are such cowards! Such cowards! Okay, please. Uh, yeah, this is over. Listen to the community outside. We'll give, we'll, we'll give a minute for people who want to leave the room to leave the room. Yeah. Yeah, everyone else will in. sit down and be quiet. We need a bigger room. Not the board. Let's bring everybody in. All right.
You should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah, it's shameful. You should think of God first and make those decisions. All right. Uh, at this point, I'm going to ask everyone to remain silent and let Mr. Flavis and the other board members who wish to speak continue. Yeah. If that doesn't happen, then we'll... Say it without cops in front of you. Great. Yeah. So, please, at this point, show respect to Mr. Flavis. Show respect to us. You're attacking us. Earn it. No, please go. It is an addition's like responsibility to revamp the Mexican American Studies program to reach a much broader segment of our student population, to reach out to students of all ethnicities, and to provide the students with the skills necessary to succeed. As an individual board member, the past three years that I have served on this board, I have received phone calls from business leaders, uh, community advocates, from parents, Democrat, Republican, Tea Party, Green Party that have supported my position, and that is part of the because reason why I have made this decision. Tea Party, yeah, you're right. Tea Party? Because you've been. Step outside and say it to the community. You disgust me, Miguel. I'm embarrassed that I went to Troya with you. You disgust me. Don't call yourself Latino. You sold out our community. You sold me out as a club man and as a peer. This is disgusting. You're asking us to suffer in silence, to be quiet, but die in silence, to say nothing? Just this is disgusting. Yeah, no, this is disgusting. Don't touch it. Don't look. I have been coming to board don't meetings for 11 years. Don't touch her. No, don't touch her. What happened to respect for what she just said? You're a disgrace and will go down in history as disgraceful people perpetuating racist laws. You're an embarrassment. All of you are disgusting and my daughter starts school here in August and you guys have hell coming for you. First off, I'd like to say that um, I graduated from Tucson High in 2008. I never had an ethnic studies course, but I was educated by an American government teacher my senior year who read the comics while I slept in the back because I worked all night the night before. And um, he used to tell us that the 100 on the Tucson High building was the best target of terrorists were to continue to hit um, the United States. Um, now I'm currently a senior at the University of Arizona, thank God. Um, I'm studying English and I'm minoring in Mexican Rights Studies on behalf of the students that have demonstrated so much courage. This right behind you, Hicks. Courage. And I really hope that you, both, you all learned, and um, Sugiyami will learn soon, that these students aren't ready to quit. And I'm a great representation of the generation of students that are getting ready to go to the next level of ivory power, which you all have come out of. And I'm speaking directly to privileged white males that go to university systems, and I'm very, very thankful and grateful that I was able to enter one at all and be able to survive it. And it was because of ethnic studies at your school district that I was able to survive my education at the University of Arizona. I don't want the people who run this state to have that kind of power in educating my child. I want educators to educate my child. So, so based on that, I urge all of you to do the right thing and to push this absolutely as far as it can be pushed with your community behind you. We need to work together on this. Good morning, everybody in New York. And I've been interacting with this district for 50 years now since I started school here in about 1950. So I know a little bit about the district. But it's just very disconcerting. Well, first of all, before I get distracted, I'm here to ask you to appeal Abenthal's decision and to take the entire time to do that. Uh, but it's very disconcerting to be in an educational setting for what really is a political problem. This is a political matter, it's not an educational matter. The prominence of this issue happened in the spring of 2005 when Dolores Huerta made that now famous statement that Republicans hate Latinos. And Tom Horn, as, even as he took umbrage with that statement, he and Russell Pierce, John Pio, Janet Brewer, John Uppenthal, 
have proceeded and dedicated the, the following six years to prove her right. They've enacted, they've tried to enact all kinds of laws, and they, they got to a point where they criminalized our very existence with SB 1070. And now they're criminalizing our history. And it, there's, there's, I, can, I cannot conceive of a reasonable person not being outraged by, by a history being criminalized and being termed to be illegal. Especially the history of the largest constituents group in TUSD. The very constituent group, <laughs> not only the largest group here, but it was this community, our community, that founded the educational system, not only in Tucson, but in Arizona. TUSD would not exist except for us. Now our history is being criminalized, and that is wrong. I can, that goes way beyond the pale. We all know that educationally that program works. Your own audit found that, that, that the program was within the, conform to the law, was a good program. The Cambrim audit found that. Dr. Capetta on May 3rd presented an analysis that found that. So we're not talking about an educational problem, we're talking about a political problem. Something that you have control over. But you know, Roberto just said something that, that many of us feel. But we're not beggars. We're not here to beg. We're not here to beg. But you know what? We always win these battles. We're going to win this. We're going to win this. And we're asking you to win it with us. Because we're going to win it with or without you. In 1848, they've been trying to minimize this. And we always win. And we're going to win this one also. And when history will not remember my words, but they will remember what you did when you had a choice between standing up for the largest constituency in this district or with Mexican haters. And you should be on the right side of history. The administrative law judge, in reviewing literally thousands of pages of evidence, much of which I was forced to review during the deposition process, found considerable evidence that we are not in compliance with all four of those provisions, the provisions which we ourselves supported. And having reviewed all of those thousands of pages of evidence, I must say I have considerable doubt myself. So the issue here is not simply the law, the simple issue here is that we have adopted these things as board policy last year unanimously, and the ALJ's findings of fact and the thousands of pages of evidence behind those findings of fact now create very serious doubt about whether this program is satisfying our own board policies. The second cluster of issues is that these, it's very clear from the historical record that these policies, that this program after the 1998 resolution did not go through a legal set of approvals either by the criteria of long-standing statute or by the board's own policy. So again, there are serious questions, leaving the state aside, of whether this program and the way it's been conducted for years and the way the board has overseen it for years has been in serious violation of the board's own policy. And there are other policy issues as well. The third point that has to be, the third point that ha I think is appropriate to make is that even if we were to appeal and even if we were to prevail, I think it is clear that the legislature which unambiguously does have the power to set limits on curriculum, and that's not the legal point at issue, would come back with legislation designed to withstand appeal written around the findings of the administrative law judge. And so the chance of the district prevailing ultimately, even if it were to win a legal case, are slim. And in that environment, I think it will, the, the students of this district and the taxpayers will be much better off, and that everyone basically almost will be much better off if we go back now go back to and slavery. stop and we go back to the 1998 resolution, which I think we all support in principle, and rebuild something which is consistent with board policy and consistent with statute. I think that is really at this point the only prudent course of action. Other comments? at this point from yeah. the board. Yeah. All right, we did call on every single person who had put a card at the audience call. Uh, the time for public comment is over. 
Does any other board member wish to make a statement at this time? All right. So then I think with this for this we will call a roll call vote on the resolution on the floor. Sylvia. Mr. Cuevas. Yes. Ms. Vihalva? No. Mr. Hicks? Yes. Dr. Sugiyama? Yes. Dr. Stegman? Yes. The meeting is adjourned.